Um, Boone Jenner, we've seen him get a lot of scoring opportunities in, in the past, and they maybe haven't turned into goals or whatever. He's got five goals for you right now. Do you see potentially a season where he, he could have a rebound season offensively? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's got five. I mean, four of them are right where he gets them from. Um, the last one was a long distance for him. <laughs> but uh, that's what he does. He, he He's on that line for a reason. He wins face-offs. He's, you know, he, he battles – uh, his tail off down low and defensively, and he knows in the offense on where to go. And and on the power play, he knows his job, get to the net, and, and that's what he's good at. And he's got rewarded for going there this year. It's been great. Now half half the battle is probably just creating the scoring chance or getting yourself in position to score, right? Yeah, and it, you know it, it seems so simple to go to the net, but there's there's more to it than just standing there. Like you you got to be strong. There's a lot going on. There's there's sticks and bodies and guys are moving you, and there's timing element to it. So it's great to see him get rewarded going in the hard area. We, we talked about it, um, uh, when the captain thing happened about how important you know that position is for mm -hmm. him. I mean, it's only eight games in, but with this team being so young, have you already seen kind of him uh, taking a leader, that, that leadership role and kind of running with it? I mean, he's, I know he scored that goal the other night. But. Yeah, I think the goals aside, I mean, Boone, the one thing, the intangibles that he brings, that's why he's captain. It's, it's not, if he had no goals at this point, but was playing hard, he'd still be a great captain. You know, it's, it's always great when you see him kind of step up offensively. I know as a, as a player, it makes you feel good and, and as a leader. Um, but it's, it's what he brings daily is his commitment to the team, to the game, his selflessness, um, his work ethic. It's, it's the stuff away from the rink. It's the stuff in the gym. It's, it's, it's one big package. It's not, just, it's not just one thing. And that's why you got to be careful when you pick a guy and take your time. But he's very well respected by his teammates. And, um, you know, I think... I think for sure, if you ask him, he, he takes it upon himself. But like I told him earlier, I don't want him to change who he is. Just be you. That's why. That's why he got it. He doesn't have to change. Just be himself. And 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 that's. Uh, he's a great leader. I think one of the most interesting things about this job of coaching, especially at this level, is like developing young players, especially forwards. And you've got an 18-year-old out there. You've got a 20-year-old. Mm -hmm. Each of these guys are in kind of different situations. But is that you've got a kind of balanced development versus probably some other things off the ice and just all sorts of things? Like, is that something that is a, takes a big part of your time and it's something that you make sure, I mean, obviously you have to get it right at the end of the day as well. Well, yeah, and, and, and there's no perfect formula because every player yeah, is different. Right. So I think you look at the league now, the way it's changed the last five, seven, eight years of, you know, it, it, as soon as the salary cap came in and, and there's a shift in, in money structure, you know, there's a lot of value in entry-level players. So, uh, and I've said this for a long time, like guys that come here, a lot of them, especially the high-end talent, they're, they're a step ahead of who they were playing with. So it's not that they didn't want to play defense or they didn't want to uh, defend. It's just they didn't have to because they're generally on good teams or really good lines. And whether you're a defenseman or, or a, a forward, you didn't play without the puck a lot. So, and then to try and teach that here at this level, it's really hard. It's, it's the best league in the world. And, and with youth and inexperience, and they, a lot of them haven't dealt with adversity. A lot of them haven't dealt with... Uh, not playing for a period, not playing for shifts, uh, the competition that they're playing against, the stiffness of it, how fast the game is now. You, these games are so fast now compared. It just seems like it's getting faster and faster every every year. So, I mean, the, the pace of the game, the strength of the players, there, there's so much. And understanding that these guys, for the first time, might be living on their own. they got to pay bills. Uh, they got to cook for themselves or find meals. You know, like there's... It's easy just to say throw the jersey on and play, and they're talented. But there's there's a lot of layers that go into it, and and part of our job is to help them through that. And and so some guys get it quicker, some guys it takes longer, and and but there's a process to it for sure. Yeah, and it seems like a lot of the guys you have are, are fairly mature for their age. I'm thinking, you know, like Cole and Igor seem to have a lot of good intangibles, but at the same time, it's going to take time, no matter what. Like there's you can't just flip the switch, and they've got to learn it yeah. kind of as the days go by. No question, it's going to take time. But but both of those guys, I've seen a. a a real good maturity to both of them, how they approach the game, their work ethic, um, how they're trying to apply, you know, the, the team system, the structure, and, and, and not just skill set because they're both very talented, but you got to play within a, a, a team foundation so that you can be better. You know, you're playing with four of the guys on the ice, you know, yeah. so you can't go on your own your own program. And, and they both applied themselves really well. And now as we get into seven, eight, nine, ten games in, it's now it's, you know, you really start getting into the individual because we, 
you start to see more tendencies. You start to see some things that pop up, good and bad, and, and just try and help them navigate through that. This has been a big part of your career. I mean, you were a, you know AHL coach. You have worked with forwards over the last couple of years as an assistant. But I mean, is it any different when you're the head coach and suddenly there's kind of a there's a little bit more of a you know, thirty thousand feet view, maybe a little bit, where you got to take more things into account? Yeah, it's, it's not just me. It, it's, it's all. It's our whole staff. That's why we, you build a staff. And I got a great staff that uh, have a real good eye for stuff, and we're all doing our part here to try and grow these guys. And you're, oh, go ahead. You're familiar with altitude out here. Uh, mm -hmm. Any advantage to the schedule of you guys being able to get out here, even to just get a day off and get acclimated uh, and get a practice? I don't center? know. I worked out yesterday and I felt horrible, so I <laughs> hope they don't feel like I felt. Man, my, the, I lived here for years, and, and I did feel like it was an advantage when you're here and you're just used to it. Yeah. Um, but you know what? You go, you play, and just don't overextend your shifts. That's one thing. It's hard to get that, that calming breath, is what I said, to, to kind of settle you down. Yeah. You got to be really careful about that. that was, and was any part of the? I mean, the schedule is what it is. Any part of you guys coming out here a, a, a chance to get maybe a little more active? No, we're we're out on the road. It, yeah. it made no sense to, to pop home and then have a day and then fly back. Like we're there, we're gone. And we had yeah. an early game. It just made sense to get here. Yeah. Does it? I mean, we always talk about keeping shifts short. Anyway, does that play into that whole thing with with the? You know, elevation. I, I think so a little bit, yeah, and that's something I got to monitor. You know, I might quick train some of these guys just to. Again, it's hard because you you get caught on the back half some shifts, and then you've got to go for a power play or something. It's you're playing catch up here. It's tough. Yeah. Um, with the ice time, anyway, uh, Zach. I think the last couple of games is. I think it's logged like uh, career high numbers or whatever mm -hmm. for him. But that's kind of to be expected, isn't it? This year, I mean, the fact. That you know Seth's not here. He's mm -hmm. not logged. I mean, how do you think he's handling the increased number of minutes? He's doing well. He, he's doing a good job. Of, and again, we're asking a lot of him right now. Um, you know, obviously at 33, that's that's probably pushing the limits of any defenseman. You know, especially last game in overtime. But you know, you ask him. I, I've yet to find a player that hated getting more ice time. I really have. So um, he's doing a good job with it. And again, he's. Um, you know, we got to find spots to get him some rest and, and just get ready for these games. But so far, so good. Yeah, it's probably something that like it's a day after or two days after thing that right like with a yeah. player because when you're playing, throw me out there type of thing. Yeah, he came in great shape. He worked his tail off in camp, and I think he's been prepared and ready for this. Are there any concerns with the Max Domi situation as far as contact <coughs> tracing or anything like that? Are you guys kind of concerned about that? Or? <laughs> I don't know. No, <laughs> he's got it, and we'll see. You know, yeah. So far, so good. Everybody's negative, so we'll see. How often do you guys get tested? Uh, I'm not even sure the schedule for the players. Um, it's every three days, I think, and then when there's a positive, I think they go uh, every day here for a week to, to try and monitor it. So, well, like I said, well, they'll let us know. Yeah. That's all we can do. Are right, Boquist any closer? Look to He's getting closer. Yeah, we'll see. I'll talk with Boulder and go from there. It's good to get him on the ice. Last thing I have for you is uh, line A. I mean, you want him to score goals, I know mm -hmm. that. Yep. Um, but he's a basically a point of game player right now. Mm -hmm. um, he's also helping score goals the other way. How nice is it to see that out of that aspect of his game as well when he's not scoring goals? Yeah, guys that want to produce, it's, it's you know, he's a goal scorer, but he also, he, he's got the ability to make plays too. So, um, you know, offensive guys, they want to get off to good starts. And I felt like in that category, they've got a pretty good starts. And, um, you know, Patty could have five, six goals very easily with the chances he was producing early. So, you know, there's there's always room for improvement, but they're, you know, the, I think they're probably happy to have a, a much better start than where they ended last year.